Hello and welcome to another episode of the program Improved Seats or your first agricultural television in the capital city of Abuja. The Ministry of Environment is meeting with the stakeholders on consultative forum on the development of national digital repository for West Packers. It is the focus of our topic today. The level of stakeholders in this room is so, so impressive. I want to thank um, Tefond and the um, Federal Ministry of Environment and also um, um, ILO for bringing this wealth of stakeholders together. And so I am so comfortable that at the end of uh, how important waste pickers are to us as a country and as waste managers uh, as it is. But we also know that in creating and solving the problem, there's always consequences that are not envisaged. And that is why we have the issues of criminality among some of, all, some of the, uh, the waste pickers that we have in Nigeria. But I want to assure the Nigerian police authority that with these efforts that we're making, we're sure that going forward, we're going to be able to eliminate the criminals among them, and we're going to empower those that are really legitimate and are doing the work. Because as we have all said, that we cannot wish them away, because they are a very, very critical and important component of waste management practice in the country. Having said that, uh, that was my voice. I'd like to read the speech of the Honorable Minister. It's a great pleasure to be here today to address a critical issue of great importance to the success of waste management in Nigeria. We cannot speak about sustainable waste management without reference to the operation of waste speakers who form an integral part of waste management value chain. Waste pickers exist as unsung heroes, but the truth is that they provide essential services which ensure protection of our environment and public health. It is in recognition of this vital role that the Federal Ministry of Environment, in partnership with International Labor Organization and TEF for Nigeria, is organizing this stakeholders forum to develop a national digital repository for waste pickers to address the myriads of challenges they face in the course of performing their duties. And that's the reason why we're here today, that when we are able to all address the issue of digitalizing and recognizing and empowering this group of people, we will be able to identify how to help them, having identified their problems, which all of us are going to speak about. And like one of the speakers said earlier, that they also have a database. We are all, we, there's a need for us to harmonize all of these different databases that exist in order for us to work together as one and to even help the, uh, the uh, security agencies to be able to help us to work better. Waste pickers, popularly known as Babambola, are the backbone of waste recovery contributing significantly to the recycling and circular economy. They form the informal group whose activities encompasses all aspects of waste management from collection, sorting, transportation, processing, and selling of recovered and recyclable materials to earn a living. They, are established, they have established such a high network of operation and distribution of valuables both within and outside the country they can therefore not be overlooked in the value chain. I checked the website of WAPAN uh, yesterday when I was preparing, and I was excited at the kind of, the level of, uh, of coordination and the, the, the aesthetics even on that website. is even way beyond the kind of website that some of us run in ministries. And I must uh, commend and applaud the, uh, the executive of WAPAN and all the other waste speakers association. The growing demand for recyclable materials and the transition to circular economy makes it very imperative for governments and the general public to recognize, regulate, and integrate waste speakers into the overall waste management effort in order to unlock the immense economic potential using them 
as reliable foot soldiers. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there is a growing recognition that waste pickers contribute to local economy, public health safety, and environmental sustainability. But they are faced with negative public perception, deplorable living conditions, and very little support from government, both at the national and sub-national levels. But the truth is that it is not peculiar to Nigeria. Check all over the world, this discriminative uh, issues and um, stigmatization is beyond just Nigeria, it's a global issue. And we are, we are determined to ensure that we face it headlong, even as a country. Globally, there is an increasing recognition of the role of waste pickers, that role, the role waste pickers play in plastic management, and great efforts is being made by local authorities to integrate and create partnerships with waste pickers associations. There is a lot of improvement in the level of engagement with waste pickers, you will agree with me, that this, if you're historically, uh, they, 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 there have been issues of um, them being picked or their, their cats being taken away. But now there's a lot of increase of level of engagement with waste pickers associations. In the formulation of our solid waste management policy, they were actively engaged. Even in the National Plastic Waste Policy uh, uh, Dialogues, they were very, very involved. Waste Pickers Associations are also been, has also been participating actively at the Intergovernmental Negotiation Committee meetings, INC, those are the ones held in Paris, in Nairobi, and even Ottawa, Canada, this year, 2024, are confronted with the following challenges. They live in shanties or makeshift houses, their activities are not formalized, which results in lack of coordination and regulation by government agencies. They are therefore exposed to several health hazards and risk due to exposure to hazardous waste. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to address the problems faced by these heroes of waste management, we must all work together to implement solutions that will guarantee better working conditions for pickers. Some of these include formalizing and recognizing their effort, integrating waste pickers into formal waste management sector, training and capacity building, enhancing skills and knowledge for improved safety and efficiency, social protection and inclusion, ensuring access to healthcare, education, and social services. Policy regulatory framework must be put in place, strengthening laws and policies to protect waste speakers' rights and interests. Ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that all of the solutions that we, we have highlighted can only be achieved if there is a proper database to recognize and identify those that are legitimately carrying out these activities and are feeding into the efforts of the recyclers all across the nation. It goes beyond SCT. It goes across all of the governments, even in the subnationals, to recognize and be actively involved in empowering this group who have been identified as the unsung heroes. I want to um, leverage on what Dr. Essien said. And that's really clicked a button in my heart. That every, every sector, every, um, every group, and every profession have their own bad people. So we cannot, because a, a few exist that break the law, like he highlighted in a subtle way, it wasn't direct, but it was talking to the Nigerian police that there are some elements, even within the Nigerian police, who also are not very straightforward. And so because of that, we have to identify that even among the waste speakers, we know that they are very good and people that are doing legitimate business. And it should blow your mind to know that these are people that are making millions of naira. They have been over, over they have, 
we, are, we have overlooked them, but they are making a whole lot of money that is contributing to the GDP of this nation. So we cannot, because of the few recalcitrant fellows among them, decide to leave them unattended to. In conclusion, I will urge all, all to participate actively, to make valuable contributions to ensure we prioritize waste speakers' welfare and recognize their contributions to environmental sustainability and equitable waste management system in Nigeria. We know the challenges we have been facing with um, waste, which is arguably one of the fast growing challenges mankind is facing today. And uh, we know that approximately 2 billion metric tons of waste is being generated globally. So this is an enormous amount of waste. And the significant impact on the environment, the impact on well-being of the citizen, cannot be overemphasized. And that cannot be overlooked. So today, the ILO is joining force with the ministry and their fund to bring this national discourse for us to start talking about waste, especially the people that are working within the industry. That is the waste speakers, whom we know that have been marginalized in many ways. As a UN agency, the ILO is also bounded by the fair circularity principle, which applies the expectation and responsibility outlined in the UN guiding principle on business and the human rights to informal waste sector. This we are first published in the SHIFT 2022 Executive Summary, Principles for Corporate Engagement on Human Rights with the Informal Waste Sector. This principle recognizes the critical role of informal waste sector workers in the plastic waste value chain. It also acknowledged the responsibility to respect the rights of informal waste sector, engage all partners, engage government actors, and uh, engage meaningfully with informal waste sector workers. Apply a gender lens in the effort to address human rights impact in the informal waste sector and drive local approaches. Also promote greater integration of the informal waste sector into the former value chain and identify and address barriers to promote rights respecting practice in the informal waste sector. Ladies and gentlemen, despite this enormous contribution of the waste speakers, to environmental and public health issues. It is unfortunate to say that their work is not recognized as should be. Their rights have been hampered. And uh, these are also listed in the ILO declaration on the fundamental rights and principle at work to identify some of these challenges. We know that the first income inadequacy, instability, and insecurity, lack of respect for freedom of association. Most of these associations are not registered, so they don't have a voice yet. Lack of recognition and social stigma, exclusion from social and functional services, child labor issues, impact on workplace health and safety, 
the occupational health and safety is still poor and impact on other conditions of decent work. No doubt, the development of a repository for waste pickers in Nigeria will be a crucial item in addressing these challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you once more and wish our esteemed participants a good deliberation at this meeting. I also assure you that ILO and its partners are committed to ensuring a sustainable future takes place and meets the requirement of decent work globally and in Nigeria. When we come back from the break, we'll hear the goodwill messages from our invited guests and how, of course, they are so interested in the waste production and protection to our farmers and, of course, to the environment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Focusing on the rights of children, youth, and also the issue of social inclusion, especially from the perspective of children's rights, women's rights, youth rights, and other issues. I'm really very pleased to be here with you today to make a small remark on this very important occasion. As our representative from the uh, police, uh, you mentioned very important message, as well as from the ILO and the tier fund colleagues. If you talk about our society, if you talk about our environment, if we talk about our living conditions, if you talk about climate change, everywhere we go, we see so much of waste lying around us. And until and unless, the waste materials are not managed properly. I wanted to use the word managed here. Of course, it involves the entire value chain, starting with the segregation, collection, transportation, processing or refinement, whatever you call it, and safe disposal and reuse. The entire value chain. Until and unless you are able to work on that issue, our health will be impacted, our children's productivity, our youth's productivity, and the whole country's economy will be affected. And unfortunately, as a country, still we are struggling to manage several of the waste. And if you unpack what is the composition of that waste material, bulk of it is really degradable waste. But when the biodegradable waste is mixed up with non-biodegradable waste like plastic, metals, and other scrap items, then it creates a lot of minerals. The issue really becomes even the biodegradable waste is also trapped by non-biodegradable non -biodegradable waste. That is where the waste problem really starts affecting our health and our children's health and everyone who is living around those areas. And the important theme of the day, really, the waste pickers, when you talk about waste pickers having database, really having the records of who is involved on what kind of waste picking and which part of the country, until and unless we have those issues with us, until and unless we know who is really involved in those issues, until and unless we know what kind of challenges they are facing, the kind of you know, uh, occupational health hazard they are facing, 
will not be able to address it. So in that sense, I think that today's meeting is a very important meeting, and I really am happy to be here and also want to appreciate the initiative of the Tier Fund, the Ministry of Environment, and also the partners like ILO who have been supporting this initiative. From UNICEF perspective, again, I wanted to bring that whole issue of the children's rights and the you know, youth rights. If we really talk about their rights, these waste speakers, who are the most important part of our this waste management value chain, it starts from them, right? It is about them being able to segregate appropriately, collect it and transport it, and you know, take it to the other level of the value chain, until and unless we can really support them appropriately with appropriate kind of the, you know, protective equipments, appropriate kind of knowledge, skills they need, and also even like what needs to be segregated and how. As I said, there are biodegradable items, non-biodegradable items, metal items, and etc. And different, you know, like uh, the process our uh, waste pickers would be involved in, it is really critical for us to look at it so that we can also safeguard their rights, we can safeguard their health, we can safeguard their really living conditions while we're really supporting the environmental aspects in the country. So on behalf of UNICEF, I'm really very pleased to be, again, uh, committing from our side. We'd be happy to work with the Ministry of Environment as well as other stakeholders involved in this waste picking and the waste management. So for us at RAN, um, we believe that the waste pickers are the, really the, are the legit legitimate waste pickers are the unsung heroes of this whole recycling and collection um, waste management sector, the ones that are really legitimate. They are willing to do the work that, honestly, a lot of us are not willing to do. They walk for miles looking for materials, the legitimate ones, of course. Um, and so having this kind of conversation is very essential because not only does it help us to promote SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, as it relates to um, support of um, marginalized people, but also with regards to recycling and our collection rates. Um, we've seen it in other countries, parts of the other countries and parts of the world, where you know because they have an informal tone to formal sector, their collection rates have gone gone up, have increased significantly. And so, if we're able to do that here in Nigeria, I think it 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 serves well for everyone. And so, for us recyclers who also are quite dependent on the legitimate waste pickers as a source for feedstock. Um, it is very crucial that we support them in any way that we can. And so having this conversation now is very critical. Um, we are excited that you know, the Ministry of Environment, ILO, and Tier Fund have taken on the baton of support. And we pray that you know, we um, get to the point where we can have this data repository, which again is going to be very crucial. Um, it will be crucial also because we can then use the data that is collected to help with the formalization of some of these informal workers. You know, training can happen, sharing of information can happen, um, proper um, social inclusion like insurance, bank accounts, all those things can start to happen when we know who's who. And so this national depository would be very crucial and essential to be able to get that done. This initiative represents a significant stride towards sustainable waste management social inclusion and economic empowerment. So waste pickers often operating at the grassroots level play an indispensable role in our ecosystem. Their tireless efforts contributes to environmental cleanliness, resource recovery and reduction of landfill waste. So by creating a digital repository, we recognize their contributions and provide a platform for knowledge sharing and capacity building. In the collaborative efforts of the Federal Ministry of uh, Environment, that of the labor, International Labor Organization and the Tier Fund in championing this cause. So together we can all amplify the voices of the West speakers and enhance their livelihood and foster a secular economy. Please permit me to encourage the organizers to actually support the EPR, which is the Extended Producer Responsibility Concept. This holds 
responsible, the producers of these non-degradable uh, pro products that we use. And at the end of the life of all these non-degradable, they become hazardous. They become a problem to the environment. And even our health sector also suffers because public health is also affected. They block our sewages, they block the uh, waterways and everything. They produce mosquitoes and we all know all the problems that it causes. So this is an initiative that is ongoing and we'd like to have you also get involved in making sure that we domesticate this extended producer responsibility concept. Because what you produce that is non-degradable, at the end of life, you have to get rid of it. So these funds are already earmarked, most times, already there as it comes in tires. They're already there. We just need to bring it out and make sure that they are directed towards the right uh, direction. So I would also like to reference the security uh, information from a Garland Police Force representative in regards of these um, threats, these downstream uh, workers poses in the society. So I would also like to tell you what UTPAN is doing at this time. We're actually partnering with the state government, uh, some other development agencies, and also stakeholders to register. We're creating a database that will actually register all these people, all these speakers, collectors, aggregators that are in the entire sector so we can have a database. And we also will work with the police force in order to make sure that this is properly done. So we go to the states, we educate, we train them, we register them properly and we monitor what they do and we give advice also and at the same time we advocate for them so that sometimes when they're being victimized or they're being um, you know, uh, threatened, we can also come on their behalf. So having a database that will actually um, you know, give information, protect all these people, workers, is a laudable initiative. We would like to thank you for doing this. Well, you heard it from the minister and the stakeholders on the consultative forum on development of national digital repository for waste packers and of course the importance to our agriculture and of course food products. That is how we wrap it up on the program Improve 6 or your first agricultural television in the capital city of Abuja. Keep watching agriculture and of course let's protect our land, let's contribute and of course support our waste packers to see that they are also having important and important needs and important roles in developing our soil and of course our agricultural produce. Stay tuned and keep watching ARCN television. Hilda Homsem is my name saying good time and see you next time. Bye from every one of us.